What's going on guys, it's Rob here with Combat Self-Defense, and the following is an excerpt from the Social Jello with Angelo podcast, which is an amazing YouTube channel, and obviously podcast, that I had the honor of being on a couple weeks ago. In said podcast, we discussed the future of Kajukembo, and what it would take to help the martial art grow. Now, I'm not an expert by any means, but these are just my thoughts on how we can help martial arts grow. Kaiju Kembo is an art that I've mentioned a lot on this channel, and it happens to be pretty near and dear to my heart because, obviously, I'm a Kaiju Kembo black belt. So, if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe and have notifications turned on, and let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you happen to be wondering where I am right now, welcome to the Muay Thai ATX Combat Self-Defense Gym. We will be talking about that in another video. Um, I was having a conversation with uh, with a GM after I got done interviewing them, and they came they 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 brought up a topic off camera that I heard Sijo and and she's well and bring up before they passed away, and it was the idea that Kajukembo is a dying art, and if things keep going the way they're going within a few more generations it's just going to die out and that there was this gap between the older generation and younger generation where, yeah, you have a lot of kids doing it, but then the kids stopped doing it. So that, that middle part, that middle part, people that were at the time coming up that were my age were rare, like people in their twenties actually finishing the program and then later teaching that was becoming rare. And they have a lot of kids, but like, like John was saying that the, 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 the college factor where everybody leaves when they're in college, and that's what they were. That's what they were observing. What What are your thoughts on it? About the not not, not what I just said about the whole country <laughs> <of a> dying <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I um just did a quick Google search. Uh, this comes from Yelp, and the top this is the top five most popular martial arts in the U.S. I know we're trying not to be U.S. centric right now, but this is just the first thing that came up. Uh, top five in order: boxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Karate, and Taekwondo are tied for three. Uh, MMA and kickboxing, which I'm going to lump Muay Thai in, are five. And then right behind them is another Thai, uh, Krav Maga, Kung Fu, and Aikido. You know how you're good at any of those things. You can unequivocally be good at boxing or at, at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or even at Karate, depending on the style you're practicing, right? Like if you're doing one that regularly engages in sparring, you know when you're good at it, right? There's no real way to know when you're good at Kajukembo. Like, there's just no real like indicative, 100% foolproof way to know I am good at defending myself in the street because I don't get in street fights all the time, right? The things that attract people to those first five martial arts is the fact that like I know within a certain amount of time with a certain amount of confidence and in, a, in the methodology that I'm practicing when I'm gonna be good at my style. Kaju Kembu doesn't have that. What I have typically, again, this is based on my experience and what I've seen from other schools, I have my instructor telling me that when my belt gets dark enough and I'm good enough at grabbing another guy's nuts, I am good at Kaju Kembu. And then you go to sparring and it's like we were talking about with the, the flow drills, right? Like we do all these, we do all these, you know, punch, punch counters, grab counters, and then that doesn't exist in sparring, you know, or you go visit another gym and you do an open gym with them and you spar with them and you're not good at any of the things they're doing. It's like, okay, well, you're good at street fighting because there's rules. That's why you're not good at, what, at that sparring. It's like, okay, but I want, to, I want to be good at the thing that I'm doing right now. I don't want to be good in a hypothetical. I want to be good at that, you know? And um, Anthony was talking about how there's, there's the, the disconnect between MMA and self-defense, right? And if you guys watch my channel, you know that I talk about MMA is self-defense. It is the perfect self-defense system with a few caveats, right? There's a few things that need to be addressed. You need to address situational awareness. You need to address pre-fight indicators. You need to address weapons, stuff like that. I think saying that MMA, I think saying that, that other self-defense-based systems address the need for self-defense more than MMA is saying that ketchup and buns makes a hamburger more than the meat makes the buns. MMA makes the meat of a hamburger. There's still a lot of other stuff you need to add, but it is the main portion of it in terms of combat, right? Obviously there's a lot of other, there's a lot more important things, but for this conversation. So bringing that back, you already have your, those are all the top five martial arts are all combat sports, right? They're all things that you can play at and be good at to various levels. You can get professional at them. You can get paid to do them to some degree. 
not everybody wants to do that, right? So that's why the, number, the immediate list after that is, is Krav Maga, which like, another one, is another one that traditionally kind of gets pooped on. Krav Maga has gone through a kind of cultural shift in the last decade or so, where now most Krav Maga gyms kind of look like an MMA gym. Like, yeah, they don't really do jujitsu. They don't really do grappling stuff, but they're training in like regular gear now. They're not focusing so much on defending yourself from an M16. It's basically a kickboxing class where you can poke someone in the eyes. Again, it's kind of, there's immediate way to know when you're good at Krav Maga now because it's looking more and more like MMA with the, the benefit of poking someone in the eye, kicking them in the nuts, right? I think Kung Fu is popular just because it's Kung Fu, right? Like everyone wants to do, do, do Kung Fu. Aikido, I don't know. There's a lot of old people in the world. Um, but the reason I think that Kaju Kembo is, is I, I don't necessarily think Kaju Kembo is dying because Kaju Kembo has never been gigantic. And like Hinato was saying, we have to consider the whole world. It's big in the whole world, just not big in the US. I think it's not growing because there's no real incentive for someone, for an, someone with an adult body who doesn't have to worry about some random person coming to attack them. The most common form of violence in the US is domestic violence, right? It's a problem between two people that know each other or between a couple, a man and a wife, right? Everywhere in the world, actually. So, yeah, so like, you don't really have to worry about someone running down the street and, you know, swinging, <laughs> taking a punch at you or swinging a knife at you. You have to worry about your brother and you getting an argument that gets out of hand. So the violence that we tend to face is the one that we agree to. And if we're practicing a martial art, that supposedly teaches us how to handle ourselves in that situation. But well, you can't do it. You can't poke people in the eyes in sparring. You can't kick them in the groin. You can't really do these joint locks they were teaching you. So you have, you kind of have to default to kickboxing and wrestling to some degree. Well, then when does Kaju Kembo really address, when does Kaju Kembo get to shine in that instance? If we're saying, because there's rules, we can't be good at it. Spoiler alert. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm actually, I just finished doing the sparring analysis between me and my uh, boxer. I said Anthony the video, but I can't find it right now to show you guys. But essentially what I did for his test, he's already a professional boxer. He's retired. I know the guy can fight. That's not the issue. Um, mostly he keeps, every time he does grappling, he complains about grappling. Every time he does it, but he always complains about it. So I wanted to test um, how he would handle a street fight. And minus the eye pokes, I said, you can do anything you want. And I noticed certain things happen during the fight. Um, and I pretty much opened the fight by, I opened the fight by grabbing his shirt, putting it over his head, putting him on the ground and kicking him in the face. That was the beginning of the fight. That was the first thing I did is he came in to punch, to box, I put my hands yeah. up, grabbed the back of his shirt, put it over his head, put him on the ground, started kicking him in the face. And not hard, like for anybody watching. When you watch the video, you know, he didn't get injured. And then later I grabbed the entire shirt and did the whole hockey thing where you go there and you start popping him and he couldn't see. And, and I'm going light, but I just wanted him to experience what it's like to fight in a situation where there are no rules. As closest to no rules as we can get. Just minus the eye pokes. And I kept seeing that in the Spoiler alert, I keep saying that in the video. I keep saying, well, I'm analyzing it. Look, as you can see, nobody died and nobody went to the hospital after this. There is a way to do this. I wouldn't suggest doing it all the time because if you have students doing this, it can easily escalate into something that you will end up with someone in the hospital. But it is something that they should experience at least once. Um, but yeah, that's what, I, that's what I wanted to mention. All right, guys. So like I said, that was the small excerpt from the over hour and a half long podcast I did on Social Jello with Angelo. If you want to see the full thing, click on the link right here and then make sure you subscribe to Angelo so you can listen to all his amazing podcasts. All that being said, if you enjoyed this video and you're looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports with the reality of self-defense and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please be sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. And if you're looking to support the channel, head on over to combatsd.square.site where you can pick up a t-shirt, coffee mug, prop top, or anything else we have on the site. I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time. Boom.